What's up, scholars? Welcome back to another episode of ICS Precalculus. Today we are talking about describing functions. My name is Ms. Agin, and uh, we're about to have a good time. So, if we're going to describe a function, we should probably draw a function. And to do that, we're probably going to want to draw it on a coordinate grid to have any sort of meaningful discussion. So we've got our x-axis and our y-axis, a.k.a. our f of x. Since this is a function, cool, cool. Um, let's draw, let's do a cortic function with a negative leading coefficient. Uh, you might not know what that means yet, but you will by the end of this discussion. So we're going to start down and go up and come back down and come back up and come back down and then let's say it continues on forever in both of these directions. Okay so again if we're moving from left to right this function goes up then comes back down then goes back up then comes back down. Cool. Okay, so there are a lot of ways that we can describe this function. Um, let's see here. Well, I notice that it crosses the x-axis in three distinct places. Right there, and right there, and right there. And what do we call points that cross the x-axis? Well, those are, let's make ourselves a key here. We've got, they could be called zeros, because the value, the y value at all of these points is zero. They could be called intercepts, specifically x-intercepts. They could be called roots, zeros, x-intercepts, roots, or sometimes they are called solutions. Solutions. Cool. Uh, that's usually for a quadratic, but if we set this equal to zero or something and we solve, we would get all of these answers. So those points where it crosses the x-axis are called zeros, x-intercepts, roots, or solutions. Awesome. How else can we describe this graph? Hmm. Some other interesting points on this graph. Well, this is like the top of a hill. That's kind of an interesting situation here. Here's another top of a hill. And then here, not only is this a roots or solutions, but that is the bottom of a little section here. Right? So again, if we're cruising along this function, that's the top of this little hill, then this is the bottom of this valley, and that's the top of a hill. What do we call those things? Those are called extrema. Extrema because they are the extreme points in certain little sections. So the top of a hill or the bottom of a valley, those are called extrema. And specifically, these ones would be called maxima, and this would be a minima, right? Maxima, maxima, minima. And that makes sense because these are maximum values and this is a minimum value. And all of these are called extrema. All right, so we had places where it crosses the x-axis. We had extrema. Uh, what else is going on here? Well, the function has a negative value like the f of x value here in both of these orange parts 
is negative because it's below the x-axis. So the function is negative when it's down here. Negative. Um, so that must mean it's positive somewhere else, like above the x-axis. It's positive here. Positive in all these places. I'm just trying not to... I mean, it's still positive on those green dots, but you know when you like color over on something it kind of bleeds in and like ruins your marker a little bit so try not to do that all right so if it was negative down here it's positive up here all these values of the function would be positive because they are above the x-axis these are all positive numbers these are all negative numbers cool cool uh and at the very beginning, when I was describing this function, I said it went up for a bit, and then it came down for a bit, then it went up for a bit, then came down for a bit. There's actually names that we use for that there, too. It is increasing here. Increasing. And then it starts decreasing until it gets to that minimum value. Decreasing here. And then it starts increasing again, increasing, and then it starts decreasing, decreasing. Okay, cool. So we can see, talk about where the function crosses the x-axis. We can talk about where the function is at a maximum value or a minimum value. We could talk about whether the function itself is negative or positive. The values for the function are they negative or positive. And we can talk about where the function is increasing or where the function is decreasing. Cool. One other thing that's pretty interesting or my paper's moving all over the place, is what is happening to the function in the forever lands? So we put some arrows here to indicate that the function was going to continue on in these directions forever. So those are, that's called end behavior. We're going to describe what's happening at the function at the ends of its life in both directions. So in this case, both of these arrows are going down. So the function is continuing forever in the negative direction here, continuing forever in the negative direction here. So what we're saying is, when we talk about these bottom, these end behaviors, what's happening at the arrows. All right, so on this arrow, the function is continuing down and to the left forever. So x is going towards negative infinity. That's saying going to the left forever. As we continue to the left forever, so as, again this is the math way of writing, going to the left forever. As x approaches negative infinity, going to the left forever. The value of the function, the f of x, is going down forever, which we write that in math terms to say f of x is going to negative infinity. So again, this is the math way of saying as we go to the left forever, we go down forever. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. That same thing is happening over on the other side. So as this goes to the right and down forever, that means as x approaches infinity, that means that's the math way of saying as we go to the right forever, as x approaches infinity, our function still goes down forever. So f of x approaches negative infinity. These are what is called end behavior. End behavior. Let's get out a new color. This is end behavior. What is happening at the ends of the graph? 
Is the function going up or going down? That's really the question we're trying to answer. Are we going up to infinity forever or going down to negative infinity forever? Okay, so we have zeros. We have extrema. We have intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. We can talk about whether the function itself is negative or positive, and we can talk about what happens in the infinity zones as you go left forever and as you go right forever. Does the function go up or go down? So there are some general generalizations we can make about end behavior if we know a little bit of something about the function. So without even seeing a picture of the function, we can know the end behavior if we know two things, the degree of the function and the sign of the leading coefficient. Sometimes we use this mnemonic to help us remember the things that we're looking for to uh, know what our end behavior is gonna be, or going vice versa, if we know the end behavior, then we know these two things as well. We know the sled, we know the sign of the leading coefficient and the evenness of degree. Uh, so for each of these, there's only two choices. Either the leading coefficient is positive or it is negative. Those are our choices for the sign of leading coefficient. It could be positive or it could be negative. And the evenness of degree, so that means is it an even function or is it an odd function? Again, only two choices, even or, uh, even or odd. So if we know either the end behavior, we can figure out these things, or if we know the, uh, these things, we can figure out the end behavior because all positive even functions, I'm trying to draw, there we go. Cool. Nice, excellent. All positive even functions their end behavior will go up and up. Doesn't matter what happens in the middle between these two, uh, the two ends, but when it goes to the left forever, it will always go up, and when it goes to the right forever, it will always go up. So that means as x goes to a positive infinity, as we go to the right, the right side, the function will go up, so f of x will go up and as x goes to the left the function will still go up the left part goes up the right part goes up so again let's do a couple examples that could be uh maybe a parabola right the left goes up and the right goes up or maybe there's a bunch of like squiggly things that happen in the middle and then there we go so this would still be an even function with a positive leading coefficient, even though there's a bunch of weird gobbledygook in the middle. All even positive functions have end behavior such that the left and the right both go up. Now, if we had a even function with a negative leading coefficient, instead of both of these going up, both of the uh, ends would go down. So, as we went to the right forever, the function is going to go down. As we go to the left forever, the function is still going to go down. So, for example, this could be a parabola with a negative leading coefficient. Right? That's like the, the path of a ball flying. It goes up and then goes back down. Slightly different because it won't do that forever, but it could be modeled using a parabola. Or... We could have some other stuff happen in the middle here. As long as both ends go down, this is a even function with a negative leading coefficient. So we could also have an odd function that has a positive leading coefficient, which would mean the left side of the function goes down and the right side of the function goes up. That's its end behavior. So as x goes to the right forever, the function goes up. As it goes to the left forever, however, the function goes down. So, an example of that could be our cubic function, right? Ta-da! Very nice. Or we could have an odd function, which similar to our even functions, the uh, signs of these arrows switched 
the same thing is going to happen here. We have an odd function with a negative leading coefficient. On the left, it's going to go up, and on the right, it's going to go down. So as x goes to the right forever, the function is going to go down. And as the function goes to the left forever, the function goes up. Um, yep, that was a negative. Make sure you got that in there as a negative. The function goes up. So, for example, that could be our cubic function with a negative leading coefficient. So, like this. Ta-da! All right, cool. These are all of the ways that we can describe functions. We can talk about their the sign of their leading coefficient, coefficient, the evenness of degree. We can talk about zeros. We can talk about the function being positive or negative. We can talk about the function increasing or decreasing. We can talk about extrema, local maxima, and local minima, as well as the end behavior. All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in to this episode of uh, Pre-Calculus at Indianapolis Classical Schools. My name is Ms. Akin. I love you guys so much, and I will see you next time. Keep on that hustle.